I wanted to make him happy, but I wanted him to be monogamous with me. I didn't necessarily want to be monogamous. I just wanted him to want to be monogamous with me. Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy. What is that face for? Just talk. (laughs) Talk, talk, talk. Talk, 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 talk. Welcome to episode 81. We're Finn and Emma. And today we have an interview with Jim and Karen. Super fun interview. Super fun couple. Yeah, they uh, actually met at a sex club. Yep. Like the day after she left her husband. Yeah. Ba- basic, well, basically. Not, not quite, but close. essentially, yes. <laughs> and uh, have been together ever since. It's a it's a crazy, awesome story. So give it give it a listen if you want. Yeah. You, no. You want. You want to do it. You want to listen. Anyway, a couple uh, quick announcements, then we'll get into the show. We're, we're hitting the road again. We are. So we have some travel plans for this fall, and we wanted to announce them so that if anyone is in the area, we'd love to meet people. Um, we're going to be in New York City the last week of September slash first week of October. Yeah, for, for like, about a week. For about, yeah, four or five, six days-ish. And then... Because we're en route to... Boston area. Boston area. Boston adjacent. <laughs> yeah. And we'll be uh, doing some house sitting, actually, in the Boston area for the month of October. So... So there might be some meet and greets out there, or at least some reach out to us and we can get a beer... Yeah. ...kind of thing. So... We'd love to hear from anybody in the areas that will be. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. (laughs) That's better. Some other things to talk about. One condoms. We haven't mentioned them in a little while, and we just... This is just a reminder that you can save 10% off of... Your condom purchase using the con or using the condom code <laughs> using, using the condom <laughs> using using. If the, you're not following the condom code, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> using the offer code Emma, and just a quick note: One Condoms does a really neat thing too. They have custom fit condoms with their My One Condom line. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. We use them. We love them. Well, I use them technically. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, we love true. them, and we've been told. Actually, we were at when we were at the Club Euphoria foam party a couple weeks ago. We had some people telling us how much they loved them. So, uh, just check them out. You can save ten percent. We we don't necessarily get uh, an affiliate kickback for them, but it's just something that they were willing to offer us for you. Plus, they've given us lots of free condoms. So. Yeah. That support, we've given away. Support them because it's an it's an awesome company and they're doing really good stuff. So yes, do that. And finally, just you can find show notes for each up week's episode, uh, as well as a list of resources and contact us all on our website, which is normalizingnonmonogamy dot com. And one other last final thing uh, at the last week's episode with Norm, he talked about uh, a sort of a presentation that he's having about um, polyamory and the American financial system presented in the greater D.C. area in September. And the dates that were given were were incorrect. It was not the 22nd, but it is September 26th. So go update your calendars. That'll be updated. If you're in the D.C., Maryland, Virginia area, check it out. Yep. And if you're not, there's three airports nearby that are all easy to get into. (laughs) That's also true. So, yeah, go go check that out. Uh, Check out Norm's episode as well. It was an awesome conversation, and he's a fantastic uh, source of knowledge. Yes. Yes, that's true. So now, moment we've all been waiting for, let's go talk to Jim and Karen. 
Just, wait, just kidding. Wait one, one second. One last thing. Uh, we just wanted to say thank you to everybody who was on the video Q&A last Wednesday evening. We had about 13 people, so 30% growth over the previous one. Yeah. And we just wanted to say thank you to everybody who, who came out and chatted with us and supported us. And if you join the Patreon, you obviously can't be there because it already happened, but the recording is up and waiting for you to download. So, And we will have our next one in September. Yep, that's all. Now we'll go, for real. No more interruptsies. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Th- <laughs> thank you both for uh, coming on the show. We've got Jim and Karen. Met you through the Cassidy machine. So You call everything machines. Not everything, just <laughs> things that are machines. <laughs> machines um, are good. Yeah. So maybe, do you mind introducing each other or yourselves so we know who we're talking about and or who we're talking to and so do the listeners absolutely be happy to so i'm jim and we have karen karen and uh you know we both uh, we live on the on the west coast and we've been together for about four and a half years now and um you know we actually met in the lifestyle uh so uh, that's one of our taglines is we met at a sex club yeah, you know, so um, we can get more into that in a minute. <laughs> sure, sure. It's been great. Our our name on a lot of the sites is Effortless Couple, and that's because it was so effortless for so long. And of course, there's always the humps, but yeah. it's still pretty effortless compared to a lot of relationships. Yeah. So we're good. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> And you are roughly, I'm going to guess, 25. <laughs> you learned to go low, man. I learned to go low. Um, I'm, I'm 48, Karen. 52. Okay. That was my next guess. <laughs> you, were, you were so close, though. I was. I was you could have guessed 50 and been right yeah. in the middle. I was just, just trying to give people like an idea of who we're talking to. I know. So, so thank, you, thank you for sharing that. You don't have to, but. You no, that's no, it's good. <laughs> you, you put him on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, there we are. Right. And okay. and so, all right. Well, before we jump to the beginning, uh, mm-hmm. how do you, like, what is your relationship dynamic right now? Like, what do you consider yourself um, as far as, yeah, non-monogamy, non-monogamy right. goes? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're swingers. For He's sure. more of a swinger. I'm a, I am found out I'm a little more towards Polly, but mm. we have an open relationship that is constantly changing. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's, yep. what, that's what we are. Yeah. Well, <laughs> more or less. The open relationship. Part. Yes. Yes. We've decided recently. It changes so fast. Yeah. And it does. Yep. You mm. take turns and you come back. And so yeah. open fits best. Yeah. And that's kind of, and well, I'm sure we'll get into that, but that's kind of what we found helps make everything work for us is being able to be fluid yeah. with each other as things, because not expecting everything to stay as we stay the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Well, so you're hanging out at the sex club and then you meet each other. How, why were you at the sex club other than for sex? I'll go first. All right, it's a fun story. <laughs> I had decided to leave my husband of 27 years, and I was wild and crazy. I met him at 15. I had been with him my entire life, basically. So I went to the um, adult toy store, and I was buying some stuff and getting some outfits, and I was all excited, and I was very discouraged, however, with the whole internet dating. And they were like, oh, you have to go to the club. And I was like, club? What do you mean? And they were like, there's a sex club. And I was like, what? There's a club for that? <laughs> and they were like, yes, you would do perfect. You will just, you will love it. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm a little old. And they're like, no, 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 nope, 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 don't even, nope. And they gave me the name of the club and I checked it out. I got online. I literally wrote, read every single line of the rules, the agreements. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't even know about the lifestyle. I didn't know about, I mean, I'd heard about it before when we were younger, but no bells were going off or anything. And so I put on a disguise and I walked in there and I had so much fun. Oh my God. Um, and so I thought I was finished for the night and I was, there's, there's food. So I was like, well, I need to load up on some food before I head home. And so before you get to that, let me show how I got there. Cause yep. you're about to get to this. Yep. <laughs> so, 
Um, this was my third, so this was her first time there, as she mentioned, and she'd never been there before. And I didn't know anything about it. It was my third time there. And I've been there twice on a date with a, a, a married lady that met her husband the first time I went there. And then I was on my third date with her at, at this club. And so I was also new to the lifestyle. I'd been in But a, he knew what it was. He I, went into it approaching it. Yeah, I, I went into it knowing what it was. So I, I, I went after it. I mean, I'd heard about it, but I was new to it. I was experimenting. It was my third week in the lifestyle um, when I was with with, with a with a date though, right? Yes. Yeah, I was there with a date, and um, so about the time she's going to the buffet to eat because she's hungry, it was a little after midnight, and my date has. Uh, like clockwork, she turns into a pumpkin around midnight and has to go home. She's one of our dearest friends now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, <laughs> so around midnight, I walked her to her car and 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 she went home. And then I stayed at the club. It was only midnight, and the club's open till four in the morning. So I'm like, I'm not going home yet. So, so I went back in and I went to the bu the buffet to eat, and she she noticed me. And uh, my like, head spun around. Yeah. I was like, oh, and then I chickened out. I was yeah. I, I was. You know, I'm, I'm a very, actually very shy person. People don't realize that because I don't act shy. But I was like, oh, I can't do that. I can't go over there. And so I just took my food and went past him to another table. And he spun around in his chair. And I was yeah, like, I oh. I spun, <laughs> literally, I did the spin around and I did the Joey and said, oh, you <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But I just said, hello there and all this stuff. And so we chatted for a while, wound up dancing. Our magical night began, and the guy that I had been with came over to check on me, and he's like, oh, you're done eating? You said you promised me a dance. I was like, sure, we can go dance, I guess, and here I am still monogamous in my mind, and this is awkward. I like this guy. This guy's okay, but I promised him. And, and you, had just, like, you had just met this other guy that night too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So she, yeah. Had, she, she had already played with them earlier. And um, I was like, and I promised him a dance. So I looked at Jim. I was like, would you like to dance with this? And the other guy was, that's great. So we all got on the dance floor, and we were dancing. And finally, the guy comes up and he says, can we share you tonight? And I just looked at him and went, nope, <laughs> <laughs> nope. And I just, he was like, well, let me leave you two alone. And I was like, all right. And then we were together. Yeah. So, yeah. So we, we had a magical night with lots of. Um, Can we give more details? <laughs> sure. You want some details? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty hot. I mean, it was, I mean, we, there's so on the second floor, there's an orgy bed and with a bar all the way around it where you can like stand and people can watch and you know, there's like action going on on the orgy bed. Or porn screen. And a, well, and a porn screen, but there was a, there was action, live action going on on the, on the orgy bed. And so we we walked up there first and um, I, I put her up against the orgy bed and I just, I said, I just want you to watch. And I started playing with her from behind <laughs> while she was watching for, that went on for 20 minutes I don't know, it so. was awesome. Then we moved down to the couches, and we had an experience there. And then he proceeds, let's get a room. I'm like, okay. Well, actually, actually hey, the way that went, after <laughs> after on the couch while she says, do you want to fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> so he proceeds to say, hey, can my friends join us? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, I just met this guy really liking. Yeah. I guess. Really? I mean, I'm going big tonight. So. <laughs> Yeah, so our first time together was a foursome with another couple. Now, these friends... He just met. I just met that night. <laughs> earlier that night. <laughs> so this is all a very fast-paced evening. Very fast-paced. It was set, this was midnight to four in the morning. Yeah. So we yeah, so we cl we shut the place down in that room till four in the morning or whatever with that couple and stuff. And that was quite the experience. It was awesome. Yeah, and her, she, was, she told you she was in costume. She was wearing a wig to disguise herself the wig. Um, she, the wig came off like when I wasn't looking, and I tried. She didn't have a wig anymore. <laughs> it was like, what? I, was, what? I was I was thought it was the mustache, the fake mustache with the glasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and the glasses. I, so, I wore like extra big glasses and my hair. It was just yeah. Mm -hmm. I I just yeah. just a little bit of a disguise. Yeah. yeah. So we've literally been together ever since the day we met. Um, that night, unless he's been traveling, other, less, other than me being gone on trips or yeah. stuff like that, traveling. But we, going going into that night, though, neither one of you were looking for another relationship. No, oh, I told, fact, we him, told each other, no, yeah, no, 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 no. no we both, <laughs> yeah, we were both 
like I, I just started this experiment and we, we clearly clicked at great chemistry. And so like, you know, we exchanged numbers and we're like, like you want to, you know, I told him he could be Thursday and Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she literally told me that. I was trying to fill up my book for every night of the week. Yeah. And so she was, and I didn't want the same person all the time. I had just left a 27 year relationship that I had since I was 15. I was not willing to jump back into one. And she had not had sex for three years. Three years. Well, and that was, that was the question I was going to ask was, so Karen, like you, you went from being married for 27 years and being together with somebody since you were 15. So this was essentially your first sexual experience out. out, I did have a few, like, for a couple, three weeks before Jim, that I wasn't trying to hide from my husband, but I hadn't decided to leave him yet. I just couldn't keep going without the sex. And I didn't like being unfaithful. And the night before I met Jim, I did tell him that I was leaving him. And then I met Jim. So we're good there. So so (laughs) So you told him you were leaving him, and then you went to the sex club. The next day. The next day. Look, pretty much. (laughs) <laughs> wow. So yeah. how, I mean how like it sounds like it was kind of mind blowing right that you went you went to go to the sex toy store hmm. and wound up leaving knowing all of a sudden that there's a club hmm. and then like I just like that series of circumstances is pretty wild. So it's like you're married for 27 years, you decide you're going to leave your husband. You still haven't told him. Well, I had told him before I went to the sex club. Right, but not before you learned about it. No. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm leaving you. And by the way, tomorrow I'm going to the sex club. Yeah. <laughs> and and then the next day you meet Jim and nothing, you haven't been apart since. Yeah. No. no. And uh, it, my... it was very fast paced. It was mind, mind blowingly fast. I don't necessarily recommend it. For no, me. it is not the we way don't... to go for people. It yeah. just happened and we just hung on. Yeah. I mean, for us, it, it was, it was crazy ride from the beginning and it certainly calmed down but it was definitely a crazy ride and you know faster pace than i recommend anyone going but for us it just that's just the way it happened it just flowed it was yeah everything felt natural everything felt for a while well yeah we'll, we'll get to that but for a while <laughs> i mean the way it all started everything was just very fluid and yeah. and and, and my BFF says that if I hadn't met Jim and found the lifestyle with him, because all my friends love Jim. Jim is like the most wonderful man in the world. And everyone loves Jim. And my friends instantly loved him. And they were scared I was going to screw it up because I didn't want a relationship. I tried every way in the world to get rid of him. And, and you know, I just would list everything wrong with me. I gave him that. And then I took him to meet my family. And he still, yeah, he still stayed. And so my BFF says, if I hadn't been for the lifestyle, I would never stay with Jim because I was wanting to have fun. Multiple, I mean, I didn't want to be monogamous. I didn't know about swinging really, but I know I, you know, I didn't want to be with one person and be monogamous. I didn't want another relationship. Yeah. 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 And how about you, Jim? Did you come from long, a long-term relationship as well? Yeah, yeah. I had been married for 20 years, um, but I had been, by the time I met you, I had been divorced for uh, a little over three years okay. um, and been separated for five or six years you know, total before that. So I had been out for a while and stuff. And then I had one girlfriend before I met Karen in between the um, divorce and and the, and meeting her. but. And she's the one that told she, him about the sex club. <laughs> yes. The, the ex-girlfriend's the one that told me about the sex club, but never took me there, never went there. She didn't want to go. She was just... You know, she she kind of dangled it out there like a carrot and everything and to help me put up with her craziness. And <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, by the way, this exists. Yeah. So, and and we're not doing take, that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll take you there sometime. Right, you know, but so that's how I heard about the club. I, I I would have never known it existed or even thought to look for it and stuff. And so after I broke up with her and stuff, you know, a couple months later, I went and checked it out. I'm like, yeah. and then I, I found actually um, AFF, uh, the website and stuff, and that's how I met the, the couple that I that I wound up going on the dates with the okay. wife a few times. Mm-hmm. And and so, but neither of you had explored or even like 
considered non-monogamy up no, until no. the point. No, so, no. So like, yeah, a little more about, about us, I guess, backgrounds. Uh, like a lot of your listeners I've heard on the podcast came from a very conservative background, very conservative Christian and grew up pretty much born in a church pew. Um, I was always a rebel though and always an yeah, open mind. She was more of a... Uh, I yeah. never judge. Um, but still both very conservative people. Myself. Yeah. But um, at least conservative minded. Monogamy was the only way, the only right way to do things. Um, had a very, you know, very strict monogamous marriage and, and, uh, and, you know, never cheated on my wife. And then when it all blew up, you know, all this whole thing, just like I said, I didn't think about it till after I was with this one girlfriend for a while and just kind of unfolded. And she told me about this and I'm like, well, you know, I've always been very sexual, but. You know, I, me too. Yeah, the sexual part wasn't new for me either. It wasn't like, oh, I found my sexuality. I've always been very sexual. Yeah. And my ex-wife wasn't. And so that's kind of why that fell apart and it, you know, and it, uh, like, well, I need, I need to check this out and stuff. And I was in that club for five minutes and I literally, I literally said to myself, these are my people. This is, you know, this is where I belong. You know, yeah. this is where I've always belonged. You know, yeah. within five minutes I knew stuff. So. But yeah. yeah, no, I was, I was studying to be a pastor and I was, I went to Bible college and wow. <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was an elder in the church and I was very much very conservative until, until after, after the, the divorce. Oh. Yeah. But then you said you, you know, when you're going to the club, you realize like, these are my people. It must have been somewhat of a relief too. It to... was a, yeah, it was an extremely liberating experience. Probably yeah. the most liberating. I mean, talk about, you know, spend my life, you know, telling people how to be born again and all this stuff in the church and stuff. <laughs> Let me tell you now how to be born again. Let me tell you how to be born again. Now you've got the real answer. (laughs) This is the real born again. This is truly a born again experience because, I mean, it was very liberating and a huge amount of just guilt and just, you know, wrong thinking just washed away off my shoulders. You know, I was Mm -hmm. like, this is okay. I'm okay. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. I just. You're doing everything ethically and respectful. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because I've never been about lying. You can't do that. Uh, yeah. I suck at lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I try it sometimes and it never oh goes well. Never goes well. <laughs> so, so you said everything was gravy and going great. And Karen, you jumped in and said up until a point. So yes. it sounds like something happened. Things moved very yes. fast. You were yeah, moving yes. full yes. speed ahead. We were together the first year, and we moved in together after two months or so. Yeah. And we had time. Like, two you rents. moved. It, you moved in together after two months. Something like yeah. That. <laughs> well, we were paying two rents, and we had yet to spend a night apart. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That makes, <laughs> sense. Like, that makes sense. This is a financial this is decision. Crazy. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you for making a financial decision. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> I hear the craziness in it myself. Yeah, yeah. I do get that. In our in our head, our justification was okay. You know, we're in our mid to late forties. You know, we know what we want, and we know, yeah. our, you know we've been down. Yeah. It's yeah. not like we're teenagers moving in together. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Our, our, no, our no. families were a little free. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was like, no judgment here. Just I was. No, no, no. <laughs> it is. It is. Very, everything is very fast paced. <laughs> so he almost one year after we met proposed to me, and it proposed to me in the club in the cage with all of our friends there. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yes, it was awesome. At the club where we met. Got engaged in the cage. Yep. And we were still very, I hadn't really started to struggle yet. I started struggling within about two years of us being together. The whole non-monogamy versus monogamy. We had never been like just us. We had never been, um, we, we try monogamy. Like, okay, we're going to like just be us for the month. It never worked. <laughs> I mean, we, we'd be like, apart and we're like hey, hey, can we, can we talk? <laughs> you know, and because our rules aren't hard and fast. They're, we have boundaries mm-hmm. that are always open to changing and you can always ask. We have, we have two rules that never change. We, from the beginning. From the beginning. From day one, we've had two rules that don't change. Everything else is flexible. The rule number one is communicate, uh, open, on which communicate has a lot that goes with it, openly, honestly, listening, all that stuff. But And then the second rule is priority, which we made up our own word. So <laughs> Communicate and priority. Yeah, communicate and priority. And, and then we'll be okay. And so priority just simply means that 
you, each of us should always feel like we're the priority in the relationship. And if you don't feel like a priority at any time, refer back to rule number one, you know, and communicate and stuff. So those rules never change. Everything else is negotiable and flexible. I mean, but you, you can't break rules without communicating. You can't, you can't, or change, well, I mean, that'd be breaking rule. We, you can change rules, but you have to communicate and talk about it first and agree on it, obviously. You can't just change them willy-nilly whenever you want. <laughs> so you kind of live by my... that whole, that you've lived by that whole mentality the whole, since, you, yeah. since the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so my whole mentality started shifting a little bit back to, I was being drawn back into the monogamy world. And I was a little nervous, uh, but, and I wanted to make him happy, but I wanted him to be monogamous with me. I didn't necessarily want to be monogamous. I just wanted him to want to be monogamous with me, <laughs> which I know it's crazy. I, I have a very rational mind and I have a very irrational part sometimes. And when they battle, I hate it. And I kind of put it to him. I said, you know, <clears throat> if you had to choose from the lifestyle or me, what would you choose? And he just, we're, he was cooking dinner and he just looked at me and he goes, well, uh, well there's a little build up to it, but <laughs> he just looked at me and goes, I'd hate to have to choose right now. Because I love you, but I don't want to go back to being monogamous. Hmm. And yeah. I, was just like, I mean, for me, oh, okay. For me, I was just trying to explain it as that this isn't just me having a good time and going crazy and so on. For me, this is who I am. This is in my DNA. And mm-hmm. I just started this experiment, you know, a couple of years before, and I'm not ready to end it. You right know, and and whatnot and stuff. So it's like, you know, please, and, please don't put me in that position. So one part of my brain heard you. Yeah, I'd rather have the lifestyle than you, which was kind of that, but not really. And um, I was hurt. And I we. What's so funny is I didn't really want monogamy. I didn't want to say I'd be with this person the rest of my life. I just wanted mm-hmm. him. To lie to me and say, <laughs> what did it say? <laughs> but I don't lie. But he doesn't lie. And we, I said, now we can take a break. I'm okay with taking a, a break that has a end, you know, has a, a uh, whatever, it's finite amount of time, like, and not where I'm not talking years. I'm maybe, you know, let's take a break for a month or two or whatever and come back and reevaluate and stuff. I'm totally okay with that, but don't ask me to just. But my mind was changing in certain ways, and I was having some bad experiences in lifestyle. And as you know, when you hit those bad experiences, you kind of feel like, oh, I just want to be done with this. Yeah. And, you know, guys having too much to drink, we call it with, uh, DID, no, D, um, distracted. DDS, distracted dick syndrome, um, you know, and the new stuff and the, the at first, I was very forward because that's the way I overcome my shyness. I become very forward and got a few, oh, yeah, no, and a little bit of rejection here or there. And he's just like going strong. <laughs> and a little, you know, I was feeling I was just, it wasn't for me because it wasn't working. <laughs> but in our time, and one of the, we went to a counselor, this lifestyle counselor, and he said, Your biggest thing is you both want to please each other too much. He said, you got to quit worrying about hurting each other's feelings. So he said, Karen, you've got to be honest. You've got to quit saying things are okay when they're not. And because all along with Jim, when he would ask to do something, he's always very respectful. He always asks, and hey, what about this? And we try new things. If it doesn't work, then we come back and we say, oh, that didn't work for us. And we're okay with that. We re-navigate. Mm-hmm. But I had stopped communicating as well because you didn't want to disappoint. I didn't want to disappoint him, mm-hmm. and it just started building so much resentment up in me, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I didn't want to be monogamous for real. I mean, really, even though I said let's try monogamy, and I'm not like him. And that's when I listened to your podcast, and oh my god, I heard all these other stories. And it's okay for us to be different and do it at different paces. We respect each other. We love each other. We want to be together. And so we communicate better. I've I've learned to say no. Mm -hmm. And it's hard sometimes. It's like, I don't want to, I mean, I hate to, I want to be the cool kid. I want to 
give him pleasure. He um, he doesn't have a jealous bone in his body. He's very open and honest. And for me, it was, it was a big yeah. thing to tra- tra- traverse. But you know, a key point she made, and I don't want it to be glossed over, is literally your guys' podcast had a big impact on our relationship because Aww. it um, – it gave her, I mean, that's where the epiphany for her came that like, okay, it's okay that we work at different speeds and that's, and doesn't mean he loves It's okay for me to say no. I'm not okay with that. It doesn't mean he loves me less and it's okay for me to say no when I need to say no. And he's not going to judge that or be upset with that. Cause that's always been our rule. You can always say no and it, it, no questions asked. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but feeling comfortable doing yeah, that. Yeah, but actually doing it is a whole lot it's different hard. thing. It's hard. Yeah. It's so hard. Because then you're yeah. like a nag all the time, like, no, no. <laughs> well, and that's the other part of the rule is when you say yes, you better mean it because the other, we, we're trusting each other to be honest. Yes. So when she said it, she, she tells me yes, and I go and do it, everything, and then, like, that's one thing that was really hard because she was telling me yes, when inside she was thinking no, and so I was going and taking the yes and doing my thing, and and I didn't know till for a while that there was a problem until until it just went, yeah. yeah yeah. But I learned to say no much better, and yeah. he doesn't care. Yeah. It's okay with no. Okay <laughs> He's not with mad that. at me. I'm like okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I would I would even argue. Because I I can relate very strongly to probably what what Jim's feeling here is not only are you okay with it but you prefer it if it's yeah. an if it's a no you would so much rather have her say no than have her say yes and not mean it right and no absolutely absolutely I do not want that resentment built up it's not worth it mm-hmm. it's not you know it because we always like say. For me, I, I need her to be clear with that because when we're at a event, at a club, at a house party stuff, you know, my kryptonite is pussy vision. It's I, a real thing. I, I get pussy vision and he's locked and loaded. And, <laughs> and the, the whole world is tuned out. You've so, never seen anything like right? it. So we know we have to make sure we're, we're you know we're clear about you know how we're operating when we before we go. Are we sticking together? Are we gonna float apart? Are we gonna you know what? what you know what? What are what's our operating rules for the night? Right. And we, and we talk about that before we get there. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's important that that I have that in my head before I get there because I know if I don't, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes back to communication. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Well, can can you talk a little, Karen, about like what what steps you took to get to where you were comfortable saying no? Like how. How did you make that shift? Because I, I venture to guess you're not the only one who's had that issue. Well, one thing is the therapist telling me it's okay to say no. You don't have to quit. You quit trying to please him 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, I am, a, I am a pleaser. So I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. But you I talk about read that, a book. Yeah, I'm talking a couple of days before that. Mm-hmm. Because actually before we got the therapist, we kind of had our I had my epiphany after listening to your show, one of your, one of your interviews, and we we had a big you know conversation before we got the therapist and worked a lot of stuff out. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. But um, listening, I listened to like three hours of your podcast to all like, I mean, I didn't that day when I started, I didn't eat, sleep, or whatever. It was just like I was at work and I was like, people leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> And after listening listening to all these other stories about how people have had their different journeys, and quite often we wondered how do people bring that up when they've been together forever to start. And so for us, it was kind of easy because we started in it, but we didn't have that foundation beforehand. And so I think us actually hitting a hump, having some difficulty in our effortless relationship actually helped me. Yeah learn their limits and I, he's still going to be around if I say no yeah. right. and he, how he reacted when I would go there was so okay all this was just on me I realized it was what I was making out of it yeah and again just hearing everyone else's stories and how they evolved I was like oh I'm I'm okay so we have two different styles and this was part of our prop part of our thing. Um, Jim's full on swinger 
And after listening to several of your stories, um, found out I'm actually demisexual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, I can have a wild hair one night and I enjoyed the two years that it was wild and crazy. It was wild and crazy. It was fun. And all of a sudden I needed more. Yeah. And so realizing that there were other people that needed more and it wasn't just all about jumping in, grabbing the buck and getting out, you know, notch check. Um, it helped me feel better and realize I can do this how I need to do it. He will help me. And since then we have really made, we've always made great friends in this lifestyle. We are, we're surrounded by lifestyle friends, but, um, it really helped just listening to others. And there's a book the therapist gave me was mastery of love. Mm -hmm. And basically it teaches you how to love yourself to, and, and you can't love anyone else. So you love yourself. And very simple. It goes back in the old Toltec principles of ancient Mexico. Mm-hmm. And it's very, it really has helped me a lot. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah. Well, and thank you. Um, I know you, th- thank you for s- saying how much hearing everyone's stories has helped you because I know that, I mean, that's our goal. That's why we're doing this podcast, but it, this podcast would not be what it is without people sharing their stories. That's the whole point. And yeah. I, it's awesome when you hear that, how much, the, those other stories have impacted people like you and, and other people too. And then you come on and share yours too. So. <laughs> well, he was so excited. I walked in the door and I was like, I found a pod. I've never listened to a podcast before. I said, I got on podcast today on the drive home because I had a long drive and oh my gosh, listen to what I found. And I was so excited. He was just like, okay. But we also had a move in our relationship, like a physical move. Uh-huh. And a couple of times, and we relocated, and we came back to here. We were kind of out away from where we live, where we were from, kind of isolated a little bit. And, you know, things just were rocky and weren't sure where we were going forward and what we were going to do. And realizing I didn't have to figure it all out right then it was helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and now we do it so differently than we used to. Um, it's... We've definitely slowed down a great deal. Yeah. When we when we met, we were literally at the club three nights a week at least, and and, and everything. We we wound up getting um, VIP membership so we could just go in there every night. You might as well have stopped paying one rent and just lived at the club. And, you know, pretty- <laughs> exactly. So we were like extremely active, and we're still very active, but not like we were. You know, so right. We, we, so, I'm so very how, selective. How, yeah, okay. I was gonna say, how has it shifted? Like, what what do you do differently now? And and do you explore it separately, like on your own? We we are <laughs> we are broaching that a little bit. He is all about finding me someone that I can have as a secondary. Um, and again, we do it different. I would not be okay with him having a secondary. Yet he has two girlfriends. Three, excuse me. <laughs> and I, well, I haven't met the third one. That's another short. Um, the two, I love them. We're all together when we're together. And it's a beautiful thing. We have so much between the three of us. And if he wants to have a date with one of them, I don't care. I love them. It's so different now. If he asked me, I met a girl at the club other night. Can I have a date? And I'd be like, are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> so so no. it was so originally that was how you were like. You're like, that was that we was. We didn't not date okay. other people. Yeah. Only we we played separately, but we were always together in it. And and so that's definitely has shifted then if he has girlfriends and separate people. So, but that but yeah. you're also you know each other, you're all friends, you're all very close. Yes. It's it's kind of a big family. And we I am with the women too, though. And yeah. I there's a couple of times he's introduced me to women and I'm like, eh, no, I don't know if it's, I just don't like them or I'm not attracted to them. So he doesn't need to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> because I've also found out in this journey that I'm bisexual and uh, had no clue. Yeah, she fought, she fought it for a while. She's like, no, I'm not. No, no, no things would happen. I'm like, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we've changed a lot in the last few months and having a great time. We're looking forward. We're actually out in the area that we're at now trying to meet some new couples together. And um, I've tried to meet guys. It's just so hard. 
people think it's hard to be a single guy. I think a single woman has it harder. In, in what sense that that you're you're sorting through a larger volume? Yes. Of, okay. Yes. Just a lot of toes. The, to the to vetting, the, the vetting, the yeah. vetting is exhausting, and I just don't have the energy. Yeah. Uh, when I have somebody so wonderful at home, I, I catch myself. I'll try to like get into it, and I'm like, I'm gonna see if I can find somebody. I get exhausted, and I look at Jim. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. This, the, no, no, no. <laughs> But, um, well, yeah, who knows, he, maybe someday you will meet somebody. Maybe I'm saying open, but not looking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's something that's just going to have to happen naturally or organically, not yeah. something that's yeah. forced or look, sought after. You know, this is somebody you're, we're going to be at a party at a house party or something. You're going to hit it up with some guy and they be like, Oh, Hey, I really like this guy. I'd like to see him again. And, yeah. Right. You know, Second time will turn into third time. And yeah, and, right, yeah. naturally. Okay. So, Jim, how has the, I guess, all of the transition been for you? Because obviously um, there's been some major changes, and you, I'm sure, wanted Karen to tell you what was going on in her brain, which would probably, you know, she was not at a point enough to do that all the time. So I'm sure that there was um, a lot of conversations, but how have you felt throughout the whole thing? Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, when it was touch and go, where, I don't know if touch and go is the right word, but when it we was... We didn't realize how touch and go we it did, was. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, we were kind of just continuing to do our thing, and I didn't know what was going on underneath for a while. You know, and then when she, when she talked to me about it and, and brought up this stuff, I'm like, oh, no. I, I was terrified, really. I was, you know, I was terrified we weren't going to work or something wasn't going to happen, you know, we were going to have to break up or something was going to happen. And I was like, I was terrified because I loved her, but I like, I had to be honest with myself about the lifestyle and how, what it meant to me and how I felt, how I felt about it. You know, this isn't just a party game. This is a part of my, my life, you know, now. And so, you know, it was, it was a lot of conflict and that was tough for me because I do not like confrontation. I'm not a confrontational Neither person. one of us did. <clears throat> so, for me to um, be able to tell her that, you know, I don't, you know, I can't tell you that I, right now I would pick you over this. I, I, I really don't want to have to make that decision. And to actually have that, be able to be honest like that was a huge st- uh, growth step for me. And I couldn't have done it with anyone else because I've never been in a relationship where I was that comfortable or that um, uh felt, I don't guess, uh, safe with her mm-hmm. to tell her the truth and stuff. Because like previous relationship, it was the complete opposite. So, And we both said this from the beginning, that if we're not making each other happy, if there's, and we're not going to change for each other, mm-hmm. we're not changing. Mm-hmm. And if the other person's not happy or if we're not happy, we don't need to be in this. Mm-hmm. So it'd be hard, <laughs> but that was our mindset from the beginning because both of us having come from very long relationships, weren't ready to jump into a relationship and yeah. it's been wild and crazy. And so where we are now, he just went to Israel yeah. for business and met a woman his first night there. No, yeah. which never like, happens. Never happens on a business trip. No, I've, I've been traveling for 17 years and Never. That was the second time I, the second time I ever hooked up successfully with one with her permission, of course. <laughs> Se- second time I ever hooked up with a woman successfully at, at just a regular vanilla bar and stuff. And that, that was that second time was within the last period, six month period. Yeah. So before the previous, you know, forty something years, I never successfully done that. And of course, when I was married before, I I just didn't try that. I didn't do that stuff. But uh, anyway, so you so, had not set up anything going on this trip. You just had met that. No, nope, it that. just happened. Yeah. And we had this we had this thing where he always had this like fantasy. He wanted to take a a woman with him while he's traveling, and I, and I can't go because I work. And I'm like, no, no, you're not taking one of our friends. No, no, you're not taking some stranger. No. no. That was out of bounds. But and, but while you're there, if you meet somebody, that's okay. So he met this woman in Israel, had a fantastic time being shown around by a local, and then he had another trip come up for so Italy. This, this comes to the learning experience that happened recently that I was getting you telling you about. Okay. Um, so, so the Israel trip was first. You met this Israel woman, trip was a first. Great time. This was at the end of April. Okay. And I met her, and we had a fantastic time. And 
surprisingly afterwards we kept in touch um, pretty regularly um, after the trip. And I found out shortly after the Israel trip that I was going to have to go to Italy for to do some for another trip for some business and stuff. And so for her, it's like a three hour plane ride. Yeah, you know, it, it's not a not a big deal and everything. And and I've been talking to her about that, and she says, "Well, I'll meet you there." I'm like, Oh, okay. okay. Uh-oh, so, I got to tell Karen. Then I got to talk to Karen about it, you know, and everything. So, this, um, is, this is a gray area. We, yeah, this, <laughs> this, this, was, this was a gray area. area. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, I can ask her about it. Um, she might, I think she might be okay with this because this is a very different situation. This is not me bringing someone from the local area with me on the trip. This is someone that I met in another country and, um, you know, but they never see each other maybe, again. Maybe the only other chance we ever get to see each other again. Uh, so, so I'm thinking, I think she might be okay with this, but I'm going to wait till this trip is happening for sure. I'm not going to bring this up until the trip is happening for sure. So, so for, you know, for a little while, this, this was in my head. I'm like, mm, and it took a little while to confirm that the trip was going to happen. And then once, once it got confirmed, I'm like, okay. So I, I told the, the lady, I told her that, okay, I'm going to ask Karen everything. I don't know if she, what she's going to say. Whatever she says goes, um, but we'll see and everything. So I so I, I asked Karen, and she was like. He texted me. I, 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 I highly recommend text for communicating difficult situations. <laughs> I was like, I, I, there's a lot of thought put into whether I text or talk to the person. I think I'm going to text. <laughs> Well, you can, she, you can clearly say, like, you can word it how you want yeah, to word it. And, and you, you can, can erase. You erase and, and go back. And, 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 until you're like, okay, erase. this is perfect. Because you know that you're communicating something very important, and you need to be very clear and very precise in your language. So, yeah, it worked very well doing the text to communicate. She didn't bat an eyelash. When she said, I was like, of course, that is fine. Like within five seconds. <laughs> of course. Like, and he's not? like, is that a real no? And I was like, that is. And he goes, is that a real yes? And I was like, yes, that is a real yes. And so I was excited for him. Jim is, I learned compersion. Um, you know, the listening, phrase. the phrase compersion. Jim is full of compersion. He is so, you couldn't have a person that experiences it more. I am not. <laughs> and um, I try. It's, again, one of the cool kids, but no. And when he, he talked, for the first time, I was like, oh, that is awesome. I think, oh, my God, that will be great. I am happy for you that you get to see her again and you get to have all this. And well, because you had heard all about what had happened, like, yes, how much fun they had had. I was yeah. full steam ahead. And then two nights before he leaves, I went, wait a minute. Is she staying in your room? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they kind of like then it's kind of like to get her own hotel room. It made sense, and I just realized it hit me, and I was like, "Oh, they're going to be waking up in the mornings together. They're going to be doing this together." Like spending all the time didn't bother me, but there's, you know, I heard a guy today say um, on, on something I was listening to. He is yeah, I messed up by let I shared the bathrobe with the woman. <laughs> it was like there's certain things you don't do. And I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, I can do this. I, I'm gonna be good. I I can I can do this. And I did for the first three and a half, four nights. And then I was like, I am ready for this to be over with. I wasn't mad at him. I was glad he was having a good time. I was just missing him so bad. Yeah. Which it wasn't a longer trip than most of my other. It was just a day or two longer than most of my normal trips, and that was because of the international travel. But I mean, a lot of my trips go for most of the full work week and stuff. So this wasn't unusual. But me being with someone like that this whole time is where it was I, hard. By the end of the third night or whatever, she's like, "Okay, I'm ready for this to be done." You know, still okay with everything. Yeah. But she, but she didn't give me a. I could tell she was very kind of short in our conversations and stuff towards the end. And um, I, I was wondering if something was wrong, but she like wouldn't give a hint that anything was wrong until All I right. left. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out a, 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 an idea for future trips like this. Maybe just don't have the woman stay for the whole duration. Exactly. We learned that. Yeah, that's that is, one of the lessons that's we learned. That's one of the lessons we learned. Very yeah. good. Yes. Yeah. But you wouldn't have but you wouldn't have learned that if you hadn't been able to communicate that. Exactly. Right. And he came home and we were too busy the first 24 hours to talk about the trip. We had other things going on. And we went for a walk and we talked about the trip. And once he shared the experiences with me and what they did, I'm not talking about just sexually, I'm talking about 
spending their time together. And, and I gave her a very detailed account. I was. And I did awesome totally for cool. a guy because you guys are really bad about details. <laughs> At least I but am. the details are what counts. I know. Yeah. You're holding out on me, dude. Yeah, so I gave her a very detailed account of the week. And, and, she and went, then I was good again. And she she experienced some conversion. And she really enjoyed it. And yeah. Stuff. yeah. And we talked. But but we definitely learned that. And we, we had never, neither of us had ever done this before. You know. And so it was, it was a new experience for both of us. And, you know, we learned a little bit. Like I said, don't make it so long. And, uh, and also communicating while I'm gone and while I'm on the trip and stuff. I mean, I communicate as much or more than I normally do on a trip, but uh, when I were on the phone, um, she felt like I sounded rushed because I'm in the, the hotel room with the lady and stuff. And I, Hey, I'm going to call my, I'm going to call Karen and check in with her and tell her and stuff, but still little felt a little awkward. It was a new experience, you know, felt a little awkward. That and I heard that I'm calling my, I'm calling my girlfriend while I'm in this room with this other woman. <laughs> right, and stuff. right. And on on this trip, and we're doing this new thing, so it, it just all felt a little awkward. And I think she heard that in my voice while I'm talking to her on the phone and stuff, you know. And so it, that maybe made her feel a little nervous too, or something. But, yeah. but it yeah. just goes back to communication. Yeah. If if things aren't right, communicate. And even when things are great, communicate that. Let the other person know what you're happy about. Yeah, and I, that's a really good point. Yeah. 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 Communication doesn't always have to be negative. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, I've heard from a lot of other people, their rides home after an experience are awesome. You mm-hmm. chit chat and you communicate about what happened. And yeah. when you share that with other people and they enjoy it, yeah. it just furthers the enjoyment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those last couple of days of the trip, she was, she had worked herself up into a frenzy in her head <laughs> and was actually, you know, not upset with me. Not but upset with you at all. Just, just I was imagining all these other things that it, yeah. Well, because I'm not a neat freak. I am. I can be sloppy. This was my biggest thing. I was, I was like, oh my god. I bet you she's a neat freak, and her shit's on all over the hotel room, and he's loving it. That was my <laughs> biggest. <laughs> But mean, meanwhile, he's having to walk down to the hotel lobby to use the bathroom because he's. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I can't do it here. Uh-huh. Needs privacy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so true. We, looking back, how we've done everything, I don't recommend someone meeting someone at a sex club and starting a relationship with them. But I'm not sure that's such a problem. Is just I was going to say I don't know that I this, disagree. You two seem to be having a hell of a good time. Yeah, no, I think I don't think meeting sex club is. I think it was just we went so fast, lightning fast, and everything we did was like gangbusters. You know, we were balls to the wall. Balls to yeah. the wall. And, well, and you had and you, Karen, had just like you were just coming out of your marriage too. Yeah. But I, I just, I want, I want to argue the point that like, there's always people saying like, oh, you can't do it now. It's a rebound. You can't, you can't do it now. Right. Of this. Yeah. Like at a certain point, like you just did it and look, you're, you're fucking happy. You're enjoying yourself. Yeah. There was some hiccups, but like, yeah. you're going to, you're going to have those anyways. And at least oh, you, you yeah. went for it and you were happy. And like yeah. most, most people would say like, uh, well, you just told your husband yesterday you were, you were getting a divorce. So maybe wait a week before you go to the sex club. But you're like, <laughs> fuck, fuck that rule. I'm going tonight or tomorrow or whatever. I'm not good with rules in general. Yeah. And I mean, in in uh, in context, you know, I mean, like I said, they hadn't had sex in almost three years, and it was the marriage had been dead long before. But there was a, there was another guy like right before Jim, yeah. and what ended it for him when I told him I'm leaving my husband, he was in a similar situation as me. We kind of hooked up on Craigslist. I miss Craigslist, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And we hit it off great, too. And I think he was the rebound dude. And when I told him I was leaving my husband, I was going to leave my husband, he got all freaked out. And was like, oh, I'm like, not for you, dude. No, not for you. (laughs) I'm leaving you, too. (laughs) And he wanted me to be monogamous with him. And I was like, eh. Still didn't know anything about non-monogamy, but I knew I wasn't ready to commit to it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I met Jim the next week. Yeah. Well, it was serendipitous fate. Yeah. Fate, if yeah. You will. Yeah. Really, truly. Um, 
you know, like I say, it's we like our our profile name is effortless couple on all our all those sites and everything, and we we're always very proud of that because it, it really was so effortless at the beginning, and, and like even though it hasn't always been effortless compared to um, you know a lot of most relationships we see and relationships we've experienced is still very effortless. Yeah. Very, nothing is totally effortless. Yeah. In our no, home. nothing is. For a long time, I kept waiting for him to get mad because I had done too much or I took things. But no, he was always just okay with everything. Um, yeah. Yeah. Easy. How do, how do you or how did you tell your friends and family you met? I was just going to ask the same question. Uh, we got a story. <laughs> the PG version. We met at another buffet. <laughs> we, we, met at a, we met at a singles mixer. Uh, at a buffet, at a singles mixer, or, which is technically was it's, oh, it's, accurate. It's just wasn't too far. <laughs> yeah, it's not, no, that's pretty close. We try to keep it as close to the truth. We try to keep everything truthful without revealing too much. And yeah. we got engaged in the club next to the re- rest. Uh, next, we got engaged in the place next to where we actually got engaged to because the pictures. Everybody yeah. was like, "Oh, you were so and so." I was like, "Yeah, that's it." <laughs> You can't have pictures in the. You can't take pictures in the club. Right. So we all, now, our friends and us, went on the, the sidewalks to take pictures. And everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, you were at so and so, so and so," which was the place we were standing in front of next door. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Totally. You, you got engaged at a Payless shoe store. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> they were having fifty percent off shoes. Well, I said, "Hey." <laughs> It was BOGO week, so it's fine. <laughs> I buy, do I get you? All right. So nowadays, do any of your family and friends know? Um, My vanilla BFF uh, that I met after I moved out here, from, I'm actually from Mississippi originally. And when I moved out here, I met her like within two weeks, and we have been super tight. And she's known from the beginning. She doesn't initially approve. She doesn't get it, but she knows I'm happy, and that's what counts for her. I had an aunt that moved out here, and there were things we were doing. I felt bad that we weren't inviting her. She's not that much older than me, and I just was honest with her. I was just like, okay, let me tell you what's going on. Jim and I are an open relationship, and she's she's a, she's a hippie at heart. She's from those days, but yeah. she was, I was like, you remember free love? <laughs> <laughs> she, she and she was it's... like, oh, that is so incredible that y'all have that. I've got nothing but some support from her. Oh, and that's good. All of our other friends are in lifestyle. Yeah, that's I'm, another thing. We met all of our friends together. We have friends from before, but our friends that we met together are, are truly great. And I didn't really have a whole lot of, all my friends were really in the church. And when I kind of left the church life, I kind of lost them in the deal. Yeah. And, and so I didn't have any, other, I don't have any friends from like high school or college or anything like that, that I stayed buddies with. Uh, it was another casualty of my my previous marriage and stuff, um, but uh, so I mean, like Karen said, all our friends are friends from the lifestyle. I have a sister in law that knows about how we met, and that's it. Yeah. And none, none of my other family knows. And still, like uh, I mentioned earlier with you guys, we're still trying to decide. Our kids are grown. Uh, we go out in the same town, and now that we're going out with other people occasionally. I'm almost kind of like, huh, do we tell them? Do we not tell them? We're still trying to figure it out because I don't want them seeing us and being disappointed in one or the other. Like, oh. Or showing up at the club. Yeah, I have an arrangement. (laughs) (laughs) I have an arrangement with the girl. (laughs) Notified. I will be notified. At the front door. (laughs) Smart. Smart. Someone will come find me right away. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. To know the ownership. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you sound like you've listened to the show in the past. Yeah. So we we do maybe have time for like a blooper, and I know you've told us some crazy stuff that's happened, but there's got to be a good funny First blooper. Part. Okay. Do the Florida story. The Florida story. Okay. There's a couple of bloopers, but there's there's so many. But we went to Florida, um, and we thought we'd hit one of the clubs up there when we were there, and we did. It was a slow night, and we found some other couples about our age, and th- so. they were rather newbies, which I'm not all. I'm better with newbies now than I used to be. 
and they were one of my reasons not to do newbies. Um, we all, <laughs> the six of us were all playing, having fun. Then we found out these people have not communicated well beforehand. beforehand. And he's actually having sex with me. His wife's trying to talk in his ear and he buzzes her off with her. He weighs her off with the hand. Of course, that didn't go well. <laughs> and she was. Uh, she was just wanting to know if it was okay for her to play. Oh, yeah, okay. She, she was trying and, to find. She was trying to find out. Is it, she's trying to ask him? Is it okay if if I play? Because she she's playing, flirting, and stuff with. They're all soft swap. With myself and a couple other people, but um, but there's no intercourse going on here. There's no Until me and him did. I didn't know that they so, had not communicated. Yeah, so she she's wanting to go the rest of the way and have, have sex, and the, she's asking her husband, "Is this okay?" And he's like, he's not hearing her, and he's trying to focus with Karen, and so he's like, he's just like, "No," <laughs> <laughs> and so she so she get up gets up and it storms out of the room, and it's just all upset, and I'm like, "Dude, and then he gets dude, up and I'm tapping him on the shoulder, dude. And he's like, "Oh, she'll be fine." I'm like, "No." You need to go. Stop. Stop. And I'm like, Jim, Jim. And like, he's like, no, no, I'm good. And I'm like, Jim, Jim. <laughs> Jim's like over there, moved on. But then like, he comes over there and I'm like, dude, you have to stop. And he's like, dude, you have to stop. And they got up and they had their moment. And, but that was the craziest thing for me. I was laying there. The wife runs out in tears, basically. I mean, she looks like she's about to burst out in tears. And I'm mortified. Guy, he wasn't like against my will or anything, but the casual, no, dude, you need to go check on your wife. I'm having this conversation. And he's like, oh, she's good. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> This needs to stop. I don't care if she's good or not. Now we need to stop. <laughs> I'm, 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 I need, she's fine. I'm, 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 she's fine. You know, I laughed about that all the way home. I was like, that's why you don't run off with newbies. And he's like, well, they were the only one there. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but I will say you probably taught them a valuable lesson. Communicate. Yeah. So, Beforehand. I, yeah, so I think it's good. Or if, if you haven't, if you made the mistake of not telling it, communicating it beforehand, it's okay to do in the moment if you have to, but listen to your partner and talk to your partner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and maybe if, if you have time for one more quick one. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. All right, all right. So this is the dis distracted dick syndrome uh, story, okay? So for all the guys, because I hear this on your podcast all the time, you know, people talking, guys talking about having trouble getting up in a situation. It's a whatnot. real issue. It's a real, it's a real thing. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do I'm with aware. ED. It mm -hmm. has nothing to do with ED. And so we're at a... Um, we're at one of the clubs and with a group of friends again, and there's like, um, I think there's four couples, I think yeah, four, couples. four couples. So there's eight of us and we, we've been dancing and stuff and having fun and we want to, we're ready to go into a room and go play. Well, this particular club doesn't have very big rooms and doesn't have any really big spaces, but they have some, they have some bigger spaces in open areas, uh, orgy beds and stuff where you, where it could fit our group. So like, okay, we'll go to the orgy bed because it's the only place big enough for all of us to play together and everything. So, so we go up to the orgy bed and stuff and there, there's a few clubs and there's like three main clubs in the area. And this one is, this is one, one of the nicer clubs that the one we met at was actually shut down during this period of time. Uh, they, they got shut down and then reopened. Um, so we're at this. Oh, I know where you're going. Yeah. So we're at this other club. that's not, not so nice. And the rules they have most of the clubs have the same rules. You know, don't touch without asking. No, <clears throat> no means no. Don't ask twice. Don't be creepy. All that kind of stuff. They all have the the same rules, but they don't always enforce it the same. And so, yeah. so this club wasn't. They didn't have as much volunteer staff and other one other people like the other clubs to enforce rules and stuff. So we're we're all trying to play on this orgy bed and stuff, and we immediately get surrounded by a bunch of guys whacking single off, man single men whacking off. You know, and the thing, and at the other clubs, that wouldn't happen. And you know, the guys are not even allowed to have sure. themselves out and open in unless they're in a room playing. Mm -hmm. and unless like been, they've been invited, yeah. right? Yeah. And well, and you're in an orangey bed area. I mean, you're expected. I mean, people are obviously allowed to watch you in an open area, and you're so you're basically giving them consent to watch you if you're in this going to play in this open area. Sure. Um, but they're but that doesn't give them the okay to approach you. And what was else was going on is. You know, we're all trying to have sex on this bed, and this guy starts reaching out and trying to touch Karen. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? 
<laughs> he's like, I says, you, you, you can't just, you have to ask. You can't just touch. And he's, he's like, uh, and, I, and other people are like, hey, you're on, you're on the open on the orange bed. Said, you're fair game. I mean, that means you can watch. That does not mean you can yeah, touch. No shit. Yeah. And everything. So, I mean, so it was very, just, this whole thing was extremely distracting. And immediately, you know, I was like, oh. you know, couldn't. <laughs> Like and it was hopeless. I mean, I, it, he cigar and every the rest. Cigar, of that yeah, I just had cigar because I, I, it wasn't happening. It's like the, all the guys whacking off around us and all this pressure. It was just like, mm. that, yeah. And and me and our, our friends, we all just carried on, and he stood our guard for the night. Bless his heart. Yeah, and so it was, we didn't ask him to, but you just do it up. And so, he just went ahead and did it. So if it can happen to me, it can happen to anyone because I'm known for being able to go all night and. As much, as much as necessary. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think being in the splash zone of seven dudes is enough to put, <laughs> yeah. to put yeah. you on edge. Well, the I'm other one was that or- yeah. yeah, the other one was an orgy of 20-somethings in the beds next to us. That was also, that was a different night. That was, yeah, I was wondering which one you were going. Crazy. There's several of those stories. Hey, well, it, it happens to everybody, and I think that's an awesome blooper slash learning moment for yeah, anybody that listening that, 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 that maybe this is their first time hearing this show or anything about this and they're like, well, I don't think I could perform under those circumstances. And you can't. You might not be able to. And that's <laughs> you might not, yeah. It yeah. doesn't make you weird. Is it, or yeah. anything wrong with you? It's just, yeah, your, your brain and your dick are very much attached. Yeah. My biggest thing, if I could tell all the guys out there, is if you are struggling, don't go to your head. Mm. Stay out of your head. Just have fun. Mm. You can please a woman without a dick. You can have a great time. And it might happen later if you stay out of your head. If you yep. focus on, yeah, that, that, I would say the same thing. You focus on pleasing the woman. Don't worry about yourself. You're going to have fun. Just focus on pleasing the woman and let the rest take care of itself. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. You can both still have fun. Yeah. Yep. yep. I would Absolutely. agree completely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, since you talked, you know, you talked a little bit about, or a lot about being in the clubs and that atmosphere. I was curious if you could touch on how you handle safety in the in that atmosphere yes. and those discussions. We totally condom play. Um, if there's condoms, um, I mean, if there's play, there's condoms. We haven't. And none of our friends have used um, oral barriers. I've heard a lot about that lately, and that's one of my things with the in that got in my head, I have always, I'm a germaphobe. So <laughs> people are like, how can you play? And I was like, sometimes it's hard, you know, but I'm not totally obsessed, but it gets in my head. So I am, I am interested in the oral barriers. That's something I want to research soon. Mm-hmm. And, but we do get tested. We usually shift off like every three to six months, one of us gets tested. By the way, use your uh, coupon. Yes, on thank SDP you very much. Oh, oh, awesome. And thank you. I actually won their gift card on their drawing. <laughs> oh, yes. So, oh, great. So, yes. so we, we weren't just making that up. We actually sent those out to people. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, that's huge for us. We definitely, it was even huge when we got together. We both went and got tested before we took the condom off with each other. Um, and that was a huge deal. And if we invite others, I don't know if we will ever, I will never say never in this. Yeah. I don't see us fluid bonding with other people, but never say never. Yeah. For sure. Do you have that conversation in a, with couples before you go play like in the club? I know that can be really intimidating for people in like a loud environment to have that conversation. So do you have any tips or Again, we were such newbies. We didn't have a book to read. We had friends that had been doing this for a while, but it was very different for them. Yeah, um, yeah we didn't know that that was something you could even do until we started listening to the show. Now that's a part of our conversation. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys for bringing that up. It's, yeah, of course. I, and I have learned if people aren't comfortable having that conversation, then that's on them, not us. Yeah. Yeah. And typically, I mean, even if the conversation doesn't happen beforehand, I mean, it's just when you go into the room, you grab the condom, and yeah. there's yeah. condoms on the beds, and there's condoms there. I got, I usually have my own condoms in my pocket, and just I, first thing you do is grab the condom, like it, this is you know not not making it an option. Just here right. we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wear one around is a practice all day long. 
<laughs> just so you get used to well, the feeling. Well, that's yeah. another thing for guys out there that say, I can't fuck with the condom on. Practice with your partner. Yeah. Don't Excellent have advice. sex for two weeks without a condom. I mean, use a condom every single time with your partner for two weeks and you'll be fine. Yep. It will. You can learn to use a condom. You yep. can learn to get it up and have sex with a condom. It just yep. takes practice. And and most you know most people playing and we we do well, we don't use a condom necessarily when for oral sex so you, know, you still can have that experience um, and when when you go to you know actual fucking so yeah sure yeah. before you well and that and that's you know that's everyone's decision to make whether you want to like that you're we're all at different levels of risk depending you know, in life in general and that's just yeah. level exactly that you're <clears throat> making that decision to do and that's yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely. Oh. But yeah, that's new navigation material for us. Yeah, yeah awesome. That actually, awesome. Hits, that actually hits on one of my other um, policies is or tip, a policy we typically have with other couples and stuff is you know everyone you were talking about everyone has different boundaries and different levels and um, that's true throughout the lifestyle. People, so you know, soft, there's all we we have labels for some of it: soft swap, full swap, you know, same room sex, all this other stuff. But even within there, there's different levels, and so it's like typically whenever we're with people. But we talk about, especially if we're like on a date and we're, you know, purposely going out with a couple or something, we'll talk about each other's boundaries and stuff. And you always go with the boundaries that are the most restrictive, whichever yes. has the most restrictive boundaries is the ones you go with. And For sure. Because your boundaries are, our, our boundaries are typically much less restrictive than people we go out with another thing i've learned from you guys yeah yeah, so, yeah. no no so, thank yeah. you for bringing that up because it's it's so true it's and you could all have a good time at the <clears throat> level that's most comfortable for everybody and yes. you don't, just because your boundaries may not be as strict doesn't mean that you still can't have a good night yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and you can have that kind of like you said if you're in a kick group or something with these people like you can throw that conversation out there days ahead of time and mm -hmm. and then it gives people a chance to talk about it if they haven't previously talked about it and then, and then you can come back when you meet in person, you can be like, Hey, you know, we talked about this. I just wanted to check in, make sure everything is still the same as it was a week ago when we chatted. And then right. it's a much simpler conversation and it gives people the chance to, to speak freely about it. And then, yeah. And you're off. and wrong. I actually have a group of friends that play without protection. They're all friends. They play together a lot. Um, and their thing is, we're safer than being monogamous and having a one-night stand with somebody. For mm -hmm. sure. And they're open about it. Yeah. And they get tested regularly. And They're more aware of their bodies and the, and the testing and all that. Not yeah. my cup of compared, tea. Compared to yeah. a married couple no. where one of them just winds up cheating. And yeah. yeah. No, and, and, they, and they have a valid point, too. I mean, that's it. I think it's it's you're in a way better situation knowing your status knowing your what you want to be your risk level and communicating that and yeah that's but but they know our you know our rules and our boundaries and they know that that's you know that's not something we're going to do and they're you know they, they're very yeah. respectful of that so mm -hmm. for sure like said, so there's a case where our boundaries are more restrictive than theirs <laughs> yeah yeah well anything else do you have any more questions i have one before you answer the anything else you wanted to say uh when is the wedding? Is there a date? <laughs> oh, <laughs> not yet. It's on hold, Jim. I I was. It it took me four almost the whole four years to get my divorce. I'm finally divorced. And that just happened like within a couple months, or couple there was months. there was some complications with the divorce. Not like me changing my mind or anything. Just yeah. the actual. Yeah, you seem yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, the actual procedures took a while. <laughs> And meanwhile, he's decided if he's not sure he wants to get married again. <laughs> uh, uh, marriage itself, right? I'm not sure how I feel about how important the actual marriage thing is to me. I'm with her. I'm committed to her. This is this is my forever partner and stuff. But you know, it's not. I'm not saying I won't. I won't say never. It's just you know, when I asked her to marry me, that you know, that was only. It's a year into our relationship. He was still... Our, and I just started the non-monogamy. And uh, anyway, so my, my whole... I grow marriage hasn't been a big deal to me. I said I would never do it again. But I accepted his proposal. And I thought if I was going to marry anybody, it would be him. Yeah, if I marry, and, exactly. And if I, if I marry someone, it, it's you. It's not, so neither it's not one matter of if like, I want to marry someone else. Yeah. Neither one of us like, we have to get married. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. we're still figuring that out. We don't know if we're going to get married or not. I just want a big party. 
So <laughs> well, you can you can do that. I was like, right? you can throw a big party without we, we, the mayor. <laughs> We have lots of parties. Yeah. But, and yeah. and we'll, we'll be there. We'll send you swag. <laughs> uh, ah, yeah. We used to hold huge parties. But yeah. 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 Excellent. Since we've, since we've moved, we have a little bitty place. So, but we used to have parties where people came from three different states. Yeah. Wow. And it was fun. Uh, so. Yeah, that sounds awesome. But I, just, I wanted to make a quick comment on your marriage thing because it demonstrates to people that you do not have to get married like no. you, that, that it is a choice and I say that like a lot of people realize that but a lot of people also just go through the motions and it's expected it's like it's the next step and right, right. that's but exactly it, where I was when yeah. I asked her to marry me it was like right. oh this is the I know this is the person I want to be with this is the next step this is what you do right. you you propose and you get married because this right. is what you do right. and, and I was still in that mindset yeah. Yeah, and even more so that you can't successfully navigate non-monogamy unless you're married. You know, right. you couldn't. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 That's just not true. Yeah. 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 Not true. Just, yeah, it's it all a choice. Well. Yeah. 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 It's all yeah. a choice, and, and there's nothing wrong. Like, there's nothing wrong with being married. We're married, but at the same time, that's you don't have to do that either. Right. So. But again, if you're not in a good place with your relationship, married or not married, non-monogamy is not necessarily there are the exceptions to the rule that if, if, if this has actually brought them together but that's sure. the exception to the rule so married not married just be, have a solid relationship and you'll be fine yeah yeah well we yeah. we seem to agree with you a lot <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a lot of excellent points um, uh, thank you. Is, yeah. You, was there anything yeah. else that you wanted to share? Any, um, if you have any other resources that you mentioned the book, so definitely put that mastery of love. Yeah. It's it's amazing, and, and of course the ethical slot, which yeah. is familiar. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, and counseling, find a lifestyle counselor if you're struggling with something. A third party that is neutral and and wise and educated and can lifestyle. help you so much. Yeah, this lifestyle friendly. friendly mm-hmm. um, oh my God, just hearing that third person that has the education and the knowledge to help you through something is incredible. Um, I mean, I'm a very, we we laugh because we're the people a lot of our friends come to for that. And so we're like, well, who do we go to? A counselor. It was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And doesn't mean you have anything wrong. We're going to keep going every few months just to, check in. just check in and keep the uh, knife sharp, right? Yeah. Keep. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so absolutely. don't be scared of counseling people, but you know you got to find someone friendly with the lifestyle. But yeah, um, you don't want to walk into being judged by right. No, and and if you do that, have that have that happen. Like, don't be afraid just to change leave. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can get a new counselor. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked about that are... in another interview we did too, and how like thank you for bringing it up because it is so important. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, yeah. And, and you can Google it. There are you can Google you know uh, non-monogamy or, or open relationship. Yeah, open, open relationship uh, counselors or swingy counselors or. Um, but you can find lifestyle from the counselors. Hopefully, I don't know if you can in every oh, city, but we, we were able to find it. Yeah. The, when you, and if you're not in the city that you can find them, you can also, <clears throat> there, there's people that do online counseling. So. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or if there's people in your community, in your area, that are your lifestyle friends that you know are very much hooked in to the community or, you know, larger, like, so we, you know, that's your friends. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, they may know somebody. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we're friends with the owners of a couple of the clubs and you know, we ask them because they're very connected. So right. we, you know, you talk to them and say, Hey, who, who do you recommend? And actually the person we went to was one of, the, one of the people that was recommended by one of the club owners. So yeah. very cool. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. use your resources, use your people. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, any final, any final thoughts, parting words of wisdom? <laughs> we love you. <laughs> we love you guys. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, We're thank excited you so to much. meet you both. And uh, oh gosh, yeah, it's it's amazing to. I mean, it's it's amazing. We're always floored that people listen to us, but it's yeah. it, it is fun to to and talk I and then the have them thing. come. <laughs> <laughs> listen, <laughs> But you're so much cuter. You're so much more handsome. I yeah. get that a lot. <laughs> and I expected you to have curly hair for some reason. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I have the straightest hair ever. I yeah. expected you to have curly hair for some reason with your personality. But you look yeah. great, too. So. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, no. <laughs> you're, all, you're all right. Oh, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> She's kind of cute. It is, it is strange to see people um, when you 
hear voices for so long, you, yes. you build up what they look like, and then yeah. um, then you see them. It's different. Yeah, that's yeah, very true. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but yeah, awesome. I think, I think I think that's it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, we will let you go and enjoy your evening. We will do the same. Yes. It's bedtime here on the East yes. Coast. Yes. Kind of, yeah. The East Coast yeah. time zone. <laughs> and uh, we will be in touch. Thank you again for everything. We appreciate All it. Right. Bye. 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 Hello. <laughs> we're back again. As always, we're here. <laughs> So one time, you know, sometime we should not come back and just have it end. just end. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just ghost on these people. <laughs> That's not our style. Anyway, Jim and Karen had an amazing story, as you could tell. And we're super thankful that they were willing to come on and be so enthusiastic and fun on the podcast. Next week, we have an interview, uh-huh. a conversation of sorts uh-huh. with Matt and Jenna. Yes. Again, amazing story, and we're super happy that they reached out to us. They found us through the Instagram, which you can find us through under, no, at NNM Podcast. That's correct. You can also find us on Twitter under that same screen name. So with that in mind, maybe we should, uh, oh, one thing we'll mention because you're still here. And you, <laughs> and you you obviously, some reason you listen to what we say. Because they're going to email us and get free swag. The other thing you can do, if you head over to a website called The Enclosed, they are a mail order subscription-based lingerie company. Yes. Again, this is not sponsored. They're not paying us to say this. They gave us some offer codes. One of them is Emma25, and you get $25 off any purchase. And if you happen to be in the Patreon group, you get $50 off with a secret code. Yeah. And this is a really cool service, actually. They're a great company, and um, we did a little Q&A for them back a few months ago, and we'll have the links to that in our show notes. So um, they actually sent me a pair of underwear, too, and they're amazing, super comfortable. And they look good, too, you know? Yeah. So All check right. them out. Thank you for bearing with us and me mostly, and we will <laughs> we will talk to you all in a week. Bye, everyone.